you on board. You're the only guys we sent into there. Report back if you see any other radio contact. Roger, you guys are being clear for now. I'm getting a radar return. Far out in front of us. Really? We only send you two into there. I'll go move up and check it out. What the fuck? Come on, we have a man down. Hey, man, look at the stuff down. Someone shot Brooks. He's clear to engage all hostiles. Man, I have no visual of where he is. Fuck, who the hell is he? Holy shit, he's on my dick, fuck! I'm gonna really like this man, still trying to make his head go blood. He's got a During the Vietnam War, the United States mainly used the F-4 Phantom II for most of its aerial missions, which included, but were not limited to, ground strikes, interceptions, and air superiority fights. However, the F-4 came with a fatal design flaw. Its main armament was missiles, which comprised four semi-active radar homing AIM-7 Sparrows and four infrared homing AIM-9 Sidewinders. The United States had believed dogfighting was quote unquote a thing of the past. The AIM-7 Sparrow was designed for beyond visual range combat. The United States was hit with a rude awakening in Vietnam. The AIM-7 had a miserably low hit rate, with just 10% of all missiles fired connecting with their targets. Combined with strict rules of engagement orders forcing pilots to move closer to visually identify air targets, fights transitioned from beyond visual range to within visual range dogfights. The F-4 Phantom wasn't agile. Its own weight killed its agility. It was so heavy that it couldn't maneuver too well. Additionally, the Phantom wasn't equipped with an internal gun. Close range engagements became a death trap. The Air Force required a new air superiority fighter. In October of 1965, a request for proposals was issued. Eight companies had responded. This pool of eight companies was then narrowed down to four. These four were then asked to continue their research. A total of 500 different designs and concepts were made. These designs included variable sweep wings, a top speed of Mach 2.7, and a thrust to weight ratio of 0.75. Proposals and designs were messy until one fateful day in 1967, when the Soviets unveiled something that shook the West to its core. So possessing maneuverability and a combat radius in excess of the F-4 Phantom. Foxbat, a new extended performance fighter, is now operational and has been seen in an area of potential conflict. It is thought to have multiple air-to-air -air and long-range air-to-surface missile capability at a speed of Mark III. More important, however, we currently have no fighter in our operational inventory that could consistently, if successfully, combat the Fox Pet. On July 9, 1967, the Soviets unveiled the Mikhail Gorovich MiG-25 Fox Pet. Panic ensued in the Air Force and tactical air control. With a gridlocked race for air superiority, the Soviets had revealed something that would hand them the victory. The Air Force and tactical air control pushed for a multi-purpose aircraft, while Air Force Chief of Staff Bruce K. Holloway pushed for just air superiority. Time was ticking with the Foxbat looming over the U.S. Air Force, and in May 1968, a final decision was made. The new fighter was going to be made for air superiority. The United States initiated the FX program, a design contest for a brand new jet. Four companies had submitted proposals for the new fighter jet. These include General Dynamics, North American Rockwell, Fairchild Republic, and McDonnell Douglas. 
the Air Force dropped General Dynamics from the competition in favor of the other three. Ultimately, on the 23rd of December, 1969, the Air Force selected McDonnell Douglas' design and awarded them the contract. This new plane would be given the legendary name, the F-15 Eagle. To avoid potential cancellation, the Air Force chose to skip the prototyping phase and instead went all in on full-scale production. Production began in 1972. The new plane was powered by two Pratt & Whitney F100 PW100 turbofan afterburning engines, each capable of producing 25,000 pounds of thrust. This pushed the Eagle to being capable of reaching speeds over Mach 2.5. On top of this, the engine intakes incorporated variable air intakes to prevent compressor stalls. The F-15A had a wingspan of 42 feet and 10 inches which permitted a maximum takeoff weight of 56,000 pounds. The new Eagle had a maximum range of 3,450 miles with external fuel tanks. The United States, learning from its mistakes in Vietnam, added the standard issue M61A1 rotary cannon, firing 20mm rounds at 6,000 rounds per minute. Its missile armament was composed of four AIM-7 Sparrow missiles and four AIM-9 Sidewinder missiles, with an additional 15,000 pounds of external ordnance. And on July 27, 1972, the F-15A flew for the first time. All of this sounds amazing though, but one question still remains. Can this jet live up to its promises? In 1975, a modified version of the F-15A was developed. This F-15A was named the Streak Eagle, and it wasn't here to play around. The United States Air Force developed the Streak Eagle to prove its capabilities. This version of the F-15 had its radar and paint stripped to reduce the jet's weight. Right after taking off, the Streak Eagle was shattering climb records, clearing the table of what was previously awarded to the MiG-25 Foxbat. Even that wasn't enough for the Streak Eagle. In one of its climb records, the Streak Eagle surpassed a rocket, reaching 15,000 meters in 77.02 seconds, 10 seconds faster than the Saturn V. The F-15A arrived at its first combat squadron on January 9, 1976. But can this new kid on the block fight? On June 27, 1979, a flight of four Israeli F-15s flew over Lebanon, providing patrol for ground strikes against the Palestine Liberation Organization. Soon after, a flight of four Syrian MiG-21 fishbeds illegally entered Israeli airspace. The Eagles vectored towards the MiGs and were given clearance to engage the fishbeds. One of the F-15 pilots, Israeli Air Force ace Moshe Melnik, fired an AIM-7 Sparrow at one of the MiGs but this missile failed to track at the final stage. The Syrian MiGs knew things were getting serious. With everyone ripping in full afterburner and on the direct head-on course, things were about to go down. After closing the distance to within visual range, Melnik selects his Python 3 IR missiles. After achieving a lock on one of the MiGs, he fired the missile. And... it connects. Melnik had just made history scoring the first air-to-air -air kill for the F-15 Eagle. However, that wouldn't be the only achievement made that day. Another pilot, Eitan Ben Aliyahu, spun up his F-15's M61 Vulcan cannon, spearing 20mm out of MiG-21. Aliyahu also claimed a part of history, scoring the F-15's first gun kill. Another MiG-21 was downed in the encounter. The Eagles had proved their worth that day, scoring three air kills, the flawless zero losses. 
Melnick and his squadron that day marked the start of the F-15 Eagle's success. From 1979 to 1981, the F-15s claimed the kills of 13 more Syrian MiG-21 fish beds and two MiG-25 fox beds. In 1982, during the Lebanon War, 23 Syrian MiG-21s, 17 MiG-23 floggers, and an additional SA-342L Gazelle helicopter were shot down by the Eagle, totaling the kill count to 41. However, that number would almost double during Operation Mole Cricket 19. F-15s pairing up with F-16 Falcons together shot down a staggering 82 aircraft with no losses. Seeing its success, the United States introduced the F-15E Strike Eagle in 1988. This multi-role version of the F-15 had ground strike capabilities, long range and high speed interdiction without the need for electronic warfare aircraft support. The Eagles would then go on to see their first conflict for the United States in Operation Desert Storm. F-15Cs would score 36 kills against Iraqi aircraft, while the F-15Es provided interdiction operations, destroying 18 grounded Iraqi aircraft at an airbase. However, the Strike Eagles wouldn't be left out of the air-to-air -air kill party. On February 14, 1991, two F-15E Strike Eagles responded to a support request from U.S. Special Forces. Five Iraqi helicopters responded. The lead F-15E acquired one of the Iraqi helicopters, an Mi-24 Hind, unloading Iraqi soldiers on its flare pod. Instead of selecting missiles, the pilot selected a 2,000-pound GBU-10 laser-guided bomb and released it. Pickle one away. The bomb exploded underneath the helicopter, scoring its first and only air-to-air -air kill with a guided bomb. After Desert Storm, the Eagles would see more combat operations, partaking in Operation Enduring Freedom and the war in Afghanistan. Since its introduction and first kill in 1979, the F-15 has held a legendary kill record, with an air combat kill record of 104 victories to an unmatched zero losses with the majority of these kills being from the Israeli Air Force. Today, the F-15 is used in service by many countries around the world and is still in active service in the United States, with the most recent upgrade being the F-15EX Eagle II in July of 2024. After the introduction of the F-15, the Soviets wasted no time creating counters to deal with the Eagle. Sukhoi developed the Su-27 flanker and Mikhail Gorovich developed the MiG-29 Fulcrum. These aircraft were superior in maneuverability to the F-15, with the Su-27 featuring thrust vectoring. After the failure of the MiG-25, the Soviets developed the MiG-31 Foxhound. Air superiority and interceptors weren't just all. A concerningly new AWACS, the A-50 Mainstay, proved a major threat to the United States. Faced again with emerging threats, the U.S. initiated the Advanced Tactical Fighter Program in 1981. A request for proposals was issued in September 1985. Initially, four proposals were submitted, but were then narrowed down to two. These two would be from Lockheed Corporation, now Lockheed Martin, and Northrop Corporation, now Northrop Grumman. The Advanced Tactical Fighter would be fitted with new stealth technology, super maneuverability, new missiles, the ability to supercruise, and new advanced radar technology. The Air Force chose its pick from Lockheed Martin, and development began in 1996. The United States has once again set a new standard for the future of air domination. This plane would later be known as the F-22 Raptor.